welcome, and um, thank you for inviting me here to participate. Um, I have to just make sure I keep my notes and my slides coordinated. So what I want to talk about today is a little bit about um, what the learning sciences is and what it tells us about um, how people learn and how it can inform the design of learning environments. In particular, I'm going to talk about inquiry slash problem-based uh, in a sort, sort of a family of approaches to learning. Um, I'm also going to talk about some of the challenges we face and why we need scaffolding um, and how we can use what the learning sciences tells us to design learning environments and facilitate inquiry. Um, and then I'm going to provide uh, a number, I'll talk about the roles for technology and, a, and go through um, a whole catalog, I think, of, of examples just to give you a feel for, for what we're talking about. So um, just to make sure we're on the same page, I wanted to talk about what are the learning sciences. And in trying to, it, to define that, um, I figured I would go to the master. And I got some slides from Janet Kolodner, and, and this is uh, borrowed from that. Um, so the learning sciences are an interdisciplinary field that tries to understand how people learn in real situations and how we can help them learn better. It, it, learning sciences tries to focus on learning in what learning um, for application, um, tries to understand developmental trajectories and what different forms of understanding look like. Um, the learning sciences are over a variety of uh, populations and disciplinary areas, and they really focus on ways of promoting deep and lasting learning um, in many contexts, in person, in technology technology, and not just design, but also understanding the environments in which people learn well and in which we want them to learn. So, so the learning sciences has a real focus on design, design of software, of activity structures, materials, teacher professional development, all the pieces that are needed to promote um, such, such kinds of learning. There's also a focus on, on learners and their needs, so it tends to be very learner-centered. Okay, this is what I learned to do yesterday. Um, as I was trying to put my PowerPoints together. So there's some important lessons that I think are generally accepted from the learning sciences. Um, first is that learning occurs through active construction of knowledge, growth in metacognitive strategies, and enculturation in practices. So this sort of active engagement in, in learning is a real key foundation for the learning sciences. There's also an assumption that um, Learning is situated in social activity, which fits nicely with the, the theme of communities. It's situated in meaningful tasks, and it often requires extended engagement. So uh, a learning sciences approach wouldn't um, think that you were going to accomplish a huge amount in a, in a one hour lesson, but rather would assume that investigations and inquiry need to go on over time. Um, and then finally, uh, another key piece in the learning sciences is this notion of making thinking visible. First of all, it allows for formative assessment, but it also allows for ongoing feedback, and ideas become objects then that people can discuss and revise and, and work with. Um, but this is really hard. So this complex view of learning requires support and guidance. Um, and I'm going to come back to that, but I want to just talk a little bit more about why these inquiry and problem-based approaches to learning. So if, if these are so hard, why, why do we bother? Why can't we just have people stand up and have lectures and give them tests and, and that's how we all got here, right? Um, but there's been a lot of recent work, particularly in science studies, um, but I think in other domains as well, that suggests that the structure of knowledge and the process of knowing are intimately connected. That we've typically focused on the body of, under, of knowledge that's our current understanding, but there are new arguments that suggest that we also need to understand the process by which that knowledge has come to be. So these kinds of epistemic practices. So new approaches to learning and educational reform suggest we need to rethink learning goals um, from this perspective, that we need to think about the conceptual goals, and I think we've always thought about the conceptual goals, but thinking about them more deeply. Um, we need to think about the epistemic goals, understanding how we know what we know, including kinds of questions to ask, how to design investigations, how to generate and use evidence, how to appreciate the nature of the discipline, um, 
things like that. And then the social goals, because if we want people to participate productively in disciplinary practices and a discourse community. So again, there's this view of, of a more community-oriented view of learning. Um, finally, these approaches should be integrating learning strategies with learning content in, a, in appropriate context. And there's some evidence, and I'm not going to talk at all about evidence, um, that some of these indeed happen. I also want to point out that inquiry is a family of instructional approach, inquiry-based learning. So what, what I'm probably most familiar with is problem-based learning, um, which is been widely used in medical areas, um, but focuses on having students learn through solving a problem and reflecting on their experience in small groups. I grew up in um, Jasper land in anchored, in anchored instruction, which I believe Bransford now will call problem-based learning, where students learned through engaging in these complex video problems. Um, Project-based science is a lot of the work that comes out of Michigan and Northwestern, where learning is situated in um, driving questions that form the basis for students' learning. And knowledge building would be another form of inquiry where I think the, the questions arise more from the students' interests. Um, and I'm looking at my colleagues to make sure I've got this right. Um, I think all these approaches involve a question, a challenge, or a problem. They're all highly scaffolded. Um, but they differ in who decides the problem or question and the participant structures and the supporting tools. So they have a really common foundation but the, the who does what and makes what decisions and what tools support it tend to vary. Um, I tend to be a lumper. So as people ask me, so, so when I've written about this, people have really pushed me to distinguish these. Um, and in a, in a paper I did with Ruby Duncan and Clark Chin, we were trying to distinguish problem-based and inquiry learning. And for every difference we could find, we could come up with a count. So I think these are, this is a family of approaches that probably has more in common than not, even though its proponents will all argue as much as they can about it.